Kia ora and welcome to Worship at St. Mary by the Sea today. If you aren't signed up for our newsletter, please sign up by emailing us at newsletter at stmary.co.nz or signing up online yourself at stmary.co.nz forward slash newsletter. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe so you get notification of our videos. And if, if you find this useful, if you like the video by a thumbs up, it helps others find us too. In our celebrations today, it was Daniel's birthday on Tuesday and Angela's birthday on Wednesday. Happy birthday, Daniel. Happy birthday, Angela. Now is your opportunity to share a highlight or a low light for the week in the comments if you're joining us with the live broadcast. We're in our fourth and final week of our season of creation journey. We've reflected on the holy ground we were standing on and how our unsustainable lives were the sandals that we needed to remove so that we could ourselves stand on holy ground. Burning bush you are Glowing and endless love Living in your midst To live by you To be alive in you This fire does not consume the essence of every person You show me yourself in creation In all of the beauty That speaks and cries out thee That you are love In a flower, in the waves of the sea In the dawn the song of a swan in the kiss of a child to his mother in the farewell of a dying father you are loved in the man who climbs the snow in the woman who chooses his life in the star Bursting with light in forgiveness that brings pain. You are earth, water, air, and fire. Earth, water, air, and fire. Take off our shoes In front of so much love We need only to listen to The beautiful, the good, the true That lies around us For it's love In the flower in the waves of the sea In the dawn, in the song of a swan In the keys of a child who is a mother In the farewell of a dying father It's love In a man who climbs the slope In a woman who choose his life in a star bursting with light in forgiveness that covers
Now the overriding theme for this season has been listening to the voices of creation. There's an opportunity today to reflect on how well we're listening to these voices. Are we really listening to the voices that we need to? What is God saying? And where is God in the voices that we hear around us? So how do we tell? Today we will listen to some voices from nature, from scripture, from Jesus, from Māori, and from indigenous people from around the world. We will listen and reflect on the words of others. West Wing is a classic TV show. Today's clip is at the end of an episode where Jeb Bartlett, the president, has chosen not to stay the execution of someone. Throughout the episode, he sought advice for what to do from different people, including colleagues, an advisor, a rabbi, a priest, and now he's waiting to hear the news about the person's death while talking with his priest. I want you to know that I had a number of people on my staff search for a reason the public would find palatable to commute the sentence. Technicality. Any evidence of racism. So your staff spent the weekend looking for a way out? Yeah. Like the kid in the right field who doesn't want the ball to get hit to him. I'm the leader of a democracy, Tom. 71% of the people support capital punishment. People have spoken, the courts have spoken. Did you call the Pope? Yeah. And how do you do that? Oh, for crying out loud, Tom. I open my mouth and say, somebody give me the Pope. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. President, but I was thinking... <sighs> you're just this kid from my parish, and now you're calling the Pope. Anyway, I looked for a way out, I really did. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. 
You know what that means? God is the only one who gets to kill people. I know. That was your way out. I know. Did you pray? I did, Tom. I know it's hard to believe, but I prayed for wisdom. And none came. It never has. And I'm a little pissed off about that. I'm not kidding. You know, you remind me of the man that lived by the river. He heard a radio report that the river was going to rush up and flood the town. And that all the residents should evacuate their homes. But the man said, I'm religious. I pray. God loves me. God will save me. The waters rose up. A guy in a rowboat came along and he shouted, hey, hey, you. You in there, the town is flooding. Let me take you to safety. But the man shouted back, I'm religious. I pray God loves me. God will save me. A helicopter was hovering overhead. And a guy with a megaphone shouted, Hey, you, you down there. The town is flooding. Let me drop this ladder and I'll take you to safety. But the man shouted back that he was religious, that he prayed, that God loved him, and that God would take him to safety. Well, the man drowned. And standing at the gates of St. Peter, he demanded an audience with God. Lord, he said, I'm a religious man, I pray. I thought you loved me. Why did this happen? God said, I sent you a radio report, a helicopter, and a guy in a rowboat. What the hell are you doing here? He sent you a priest, a rabbi, and a Quaker, Mr. President not to mention his son, Jesus Christ. What do you want from him? Excuse me. Jed, would you like me to hear your confession? Yes, please. As we begin today, let us acknowledge that we don't always listen to God's voice when it is through the voices of other people. Let us confess together that we don't always listen to the voices of people who are different. We don't always listen to the words that make us uncomfortable. We ignore the voices of suffering. We ignore the voices of the planet. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. God has heard our cry, forgives us, and welcomes us home. Be at peace, and listen carefully to the voices God sends. Amen. 1 Timothy chapter 6, beginning at verse 6. And religion does make your life rich by making you content with what you have, 
We didn't bring anything into this world, and we won't take anything with us when we leave. So people should be satisfied just to have food and clothes. People who want to be rich fall into all sorts of temptations and traps. They are caught by foolish and harmful desires that drag them down and destroy them. The love of money causes all kinds of trouble. Some people want money so much they have given up their faith and caused themselves a lot of pain. Luke chapter 16 verses 19 to 31 There was once a rich man who wore expensive clothes and every day ate the best food. But a poor beggar named Lazarus was brought to the gate of the rich man's house. He was happy just to eat the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. His body was covered with sores and dogs kept coming up to lick them. The poor man died and angels took him to the place of honour next to Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. He went to hell and was suffering terribly. When he looked up and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side, he said to Abraham, Have pity on me, send Lazarus to dip his fingers in water and touch my tongue. I'm suffering terribly in this fire. Abraham answered, My friend, remember that while you lived you had everything good, and Lazarus had everything bad. Now he is happy and you are in pain. And besides, there is a deep ditch between us, and no one from either side can cross over. But the rich man said, Abraham, then please send Lazarus to my father's home. Let him warn my five brothers so they will come to this horrible place. Abraham answered, Your brothers can read what Moses and the prophets wrote. They should pay attention to that. Then the rich man said, No, that's not enough. If only someone from the dead would go to them, they would listen and turn to God. So Abraham said, If they won't pay attention to Moses and the prophets, they won't listen, even to someone who comes back from the dead. In our clip from the West Wing, the President receives all the advice he needs. The advice is that clemency should be given to the person. But he ignores the advice. And this has consequences for the man who is executed and for the President himself. You might say the prophets came to talk to him, but he ignored the voice of the prophets. The president is in a similar situation to the parable of the rich young man in today's gospel. He has heard the prophets and Moses, but he has lived his own way. Now we have a new king, King Charles. But when King Charles was Prince Charles, one of his key agendas was to make people aware of the destruction of creation. In a similar way, David Attenborough has done the same but you might say on a much larger scale. We have prophets around us telling us that our lives aren't sustainable. This week there was a New Zealand Herald article saying that the oceans are rising by 2.4 centimetres a year. That doesn't sound like much, but over, two, over 10 years, that's 24 centimetres. Over 100 years, that's 2.4 metres. Our lifestyle directly leads to the erasing of many Pacific Island cultures through the rising sea levels. The Gospel reading, when viewed with a green lens, is rather confronting for us. And we need to ask questions of it of climate change. And when it comes to climate change, are we ourselves Lazarus in the story or the rich young man? Paul's advice to Timothy today is on contentment and it gives us a good opportunity to listen to the prophets. 1 Timothy 6, 6-19, which we heard, falls in part of Paul's teaching to Timothy, beginning with chapter 5. And it has to do with how Timothy and other people of faith are to live with those around them. Paul isn't so much suggesting, but rather he's commanding. He's commanding what he thinks Timothy 
and the rest of the faith community should be doing, and by extension, what you and I should be doing. In today's snippet from Timothy, there's an emphasis on interconnectedness, harmonious living, and living a virtuous life, which in turn leads to godliness and contentment. Paul seeks to reframe what it means to live in plenty without the need to overconsume. What an appropriate reading for us in the season of creation as we reflect on what it means to simply ask for our daily bread. Paul wasn't talking about putting aside our consumerism to protect creation though. He was talking about putting aside our consumerism to protect our relationships and the faith community. But when we view Timothy with the view of a green lens, we see that this scripture has so much to say to us today about caring for creation and maintaining our symbiotic relationships with creation. Now, consumerism is often defined as a culture in which the orientation of society and its people is defined by what they consume. Within cultures of consumerism, like New Zealand and Australia and America and the United Kingdom, the focus is not only on the goods and services, but also on the brands and status attached to these goods, and the statement that they make about one's social standing. Although consumerism is what holds our economies in balance, there is a downside to this culture and lifestyle when it's lived without caution. It promotes rat race and a search for wealth in order to afford and increase one's consumption, especially of the more desirable things. And this more, the more often focuses on the individual and seldom on the benefit that it has for your neighbour. It often leads to a life of increased debt, and that of course results in mental health problems, such as stress and depression. On an ecological level, the earth also experiences a miserable stress, as more needs to be extracted from the earth to meet the ever-increasing demand. Now critics of consumerism highlight that mass consumerism exhausts our natural resources and it creates a tremendous amount of waste. It increases our environmental problems at almost every stage in the production process. Now you might have heard of fast fashion, where clothes are designed to be worn only for one season. Or you might have heard of planned obsolescence, where technology is designed to become obsolete quickly so that you'll buy the latest shiny widget. It's in this culture of consumerism that the idea of you can never have enough speaks incredibly loudly and it encourages us in our pursuit of accumulating more whilst plunging ourselves and creation into ruin and destruction. And of course that leads to disharmony, the disharmony experienced through different social and moral ills such as greed and corruption, whilst also promoting the destruction of the environment through our actions, such as deforestation, and of course the destruction of coastlands for development. Paul in his letter to Timothy reminds us that all riches are from God, and it is God who richly provides us with everything to enjoy. The enjoyment, though, is not without responsibility and self-restraint. The challenge is for each of us to reflect on the rat race we may find ourselves in and to slow down, to focus on what is more important, what Paul calls godly treasure, such as living in right relationship with ourselves, with God and with all of God's creation understanding that we live under God's provision and that our call is to pursue godliness with contentment through doing good. This requires us to be gentle with our neighbour 
and the environment, or as verses 11 and 18 say, to pursue love and to be ready to share. All these virtues call us to live a life that is conscious and interconnected, a conscious interconnected life between God, ourselves and creation, while living in harmony with each other. The invitation today is to learn to keep check on what we spend our money on and for what purposes. And through this, learning to be content and practicing sustainable and ethical living. So every time you pray the Lord's Prayer, remember what it says. Give us today our daily bread. A life of contentment is a way of life that leads to abundant life. And it's the opposite to the life of the rich man in Luke 16, which we heard, that leads to destruction and ruin. We grow our wealth and spiritual treasures as we maintain right and just relationships between ourselves and with creation. And as we moderate what we buy, we are able to nurture those relationships. Today's invitation is to listen to the prophets and to take care of that which gives true meaning to life, whilst living with contentment and in harmony with all that God has created, both human and non-human. Amen. We have some voices from creation for you to identify now. Have a listen to these. We have a moment to reflect now. What is something that resonates with you? What is something that challenges you? And what is something that you can change this week?
Our prayers this morning are inspired by our reading from Timothy. And religion does make your life rich by making you content with what you have. Help us to be content with what we have. We didn't bring anything into this world and we won't take anything with us when we leave. Help us to share our resources. So we should be satisfied just to have food and clothes. Help us to let go of the desire to have more. People who want to be rich fall into all sorts of temptations and traps. Save us from temptation, Lord. And they are caught by foolish and harmful desires that drag them down and destroy them. Help all people who are consumed by desire for more. The love of money causes all kinds of trouble. Some people want money so much that they've given up their faith and cause themselves a lot of pain. Be with those who are suffering from the impact of others' choices. And as Christ teaches us, we pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
May God, who established the dance of creation, who marvelled at the lilies of the field, who transforms chaos to order, lead us to transform our lives in the church to listen to the voice of all all creatures that reflect God's glory in creation. And may the blessing of God, creator, redeemer and giver of life be with you all this week. Amen. Thank you.